had started looking at the components of system design and we had uh, started with the application rates. We had said that the application rate is of two types, one is gross application rate and the other is the net application rate because these two are, they can be very different depending on the, the conditions prevailing in the area. Let us look at the various uh, expressions which we use to get the gross application rate and the net application rate. The gross application rate We express this as dg as a function of the sprinkler nozzle discharge and the spacing of the sprinkler head. This expression, the DG is DG is the gross application rate and is given in centimeters per hour. This Q is the sprinkler nozzle. discharge and this is given in liters per second and these we have already seen that these are the spacings, this is the lateral spacing and the main line spacing. both are in meters. As per our discussion uh, in the last class, we had, we had mentioned that the, the gross application debt or the gross application rate will be affected because of the the losses which are mainly because of the evaporation and wind drift losses. So accordingly the net application rate let's call it DA will be the gross application rate into 1 minus LS where LS is the evaporation and when drift losses and traction. And DG is the gross application rate in centimeters per hour. So DA will be also in centimeters per hour. quantity will be very important to be um, assessed because ultimately whatsoever you want to, to apply to the ground that is more important. The net irrigation rate is more important than what is coming out of the nozzle. As the nozzle discharge is if it is most of it is going to be lost then I think is 
is not uh, uh, going to give you the end result which is the yield of the crop because the yield of the crop will be dependent on how much of that has been absorbed by the soil and which is basically dependent on the net application rate. So the net application rate in this particular case is since the, the, the variation can be large in terms of the, the evaporation and the wind drift losses. So the net application rate, a proper evaluation of the net application rate takes much more uh, uh, significance than you will find the loss rates uh, in the other, uh, other irrigation systems where the variation is not that drastic as uh, in comparison to what you can get here. But at the same time, you might land up with a situation where you have found that there are some losses which are known, which you can evaluate and after taking into consideration those losses, you find that the gross which, which becomes uh, available or let me put it the other way around, that if you know a gross and out of that gross the losses are very significant, the remaining portion which is left is the net irrigation uh, um, rate which, which is applicable. If that becomes very small, in some cases it might happen that is not applicable, is not, uh, you, you might not be able to apply that rate. So in that situation you will have to come out with some rates which are, which are uh, implementable. So that after taking care of the losses, there is some net which can be implemented onto the, the, the field. So from that angle, there has to be some lower constraint which has to be put on the, the gross application rate, which is what has been recommended after a lot of experimentation in this particular uh, um, chart or this, this table which is giving the recommended minimum gross rate is DG in centimeters per hour for different climatic zones. And the values of these uh, gross application rates, the variation which has been given that in case your gross application rate is working out to be lower than this, it might not become um, practicable, you might have to adopt the rates which are these recommended rates, otherwise your efficiencies will be really very drastically affected. So for a cool maritime climatic zone, your uh, gross application rate can vary between 0.25 to 0.4 centimeters per hour. For warm conditions, the warm maritime conditions, the rate is 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. For cool, dry continental conditions, is again the rate is 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 centimeters per hour. Similarly, for the other conditions, these are the recommended rates. So you can see here that the, the variation is really very large. As the climatic conditions change, your minimum gross application rate, which can be effectively applied, that really varies drastically from 0.25 to somewhere around 1.9 centimeters per hour under the worst conditions of hot desert conditions. This is a very important aspect that you must check your, these recommendations are basically made available to check your design parameters under the prevailing conditions, whether uh, uh, those conditions will be achievable or not, because when you are making calculations, there you will not get the feel whether these things are really, these parameters are the parameters which can be 
implemented. So for uh, that purpose, all these these recommended uh, values have been obtained after a lot of experimentation all over the place, and these are the ones which are uh, recommended in literature so that the designers can take help of these uh, findings. Now similarly, there are guidelines on the maximum net application rate which can be uh, implemented at a particular site. And when you talk of the maximum application rates, the criteria, the major criteria is that you should not have a rate which can produce enough. So that being the, the governing criteria, there should be a rate which should, uh, you should provide the, the application or the rate of application in such a manner that under the prevailing conditions your runoff generation should be avoided, which means the slope will become a very important aspect. If you are looking at the minimum or the, the maximum uh, application rate which can be applied, which is the net application rate, you have to consider basically the soil characteristics which will decide what is the, the infiltration rate and the slope which will decide what will be the velocities which can be uh, obtained and even uh, the, the infiltration rate can also be affected because of the slopes. So the recommended values which have been uh, uh, given for the maximum net application rate which can be used under different conditions of soil texture and profile and the slope. These are uh, divided into these broad categories, the coarse sandy soil, there is a soil texture and the profile is given in terms of whether the, the depth of the soil is less than 2 meters or beyond 2 meters. So if is the to 2 meters of soil and the other condition is the coarse sandy soil over compact soil. In this case, the, the profile of the soil, the, the, the shallow soil, the deep soil. So if you have a deep soil, then you can afford to have a higher level of uh, net application rate. The maximum net application rate in that situation can be 5 centimeters per hour for a slope which is very small slope, 0 to 5 percent. As the slope increases, you will find that the, the maximum allowable net application rate will reduce and the reduction is quite significant. Now these limiting values, they are obtained with respect to the, the, the situation that the, the objective that there should not be any runoff produced under these conditions of uh, soil texture, the soil profile and the slope. When you have more compact soil, the profile is less than 2 meters, then you have these uh, recommended maximum net application rates which should be utilized. Similarly, in the other cases also, to 2 meters and over compact soil, you have these recommended values. And in the case of cell flow,
also observe that as you go from the coarser soil to more heavy soils, your rate of applications are also reducing and the reduction is also uh, quite significant than this. For example, from 5, mil, 5 centimeters per hour, it has come down to 0.8 centimeters per hour for silt loam under the compact conditions. In the case of heavy textured uh, clay or clay loams, the profile of the soil doesn't, doesn't make much of a difference. So there's only a single case because it's not very much affected by the profile. The, the soil texture itself is the more uh, influencing factor. And as such, the the rate of application is very small. So in the case of heavy textured clay or uh, clay loams, you will find that there is as such the, the rate of application which is allowed or which is uh, uh, permissible if you want to avoid the surface runoff is a very small rate varying from 0.4 centimeters per hour to 0.2 centimeters per hour. Then besides the, the application rate, the next item which is is quite important as the sprinkler nozzle discharge. The sprinkler nozzle discharge varies with respect to the pressure which is the prevailing pressure and it can be expressed with this function where Q is the nozzle discharge. liters per second and uh, P is the nozzle operating pressure and kilopascal and K is a proportionality constant depends on the diameter of the nozzle and the model of the nozzle. What is the, how the nozzle uh, and how the nozzle is manufactured, what type of nozzle. That they are uh, it will be a function of the the model of the nozzle as well to a certain extent. So these the k values are normally not given um, directly. They are invariably they are available in terms of the, the tables, which are rating tables given by the manufacturers. When a manufacturer comes out with a new model of the nozzle, they will give you a accompanying table which will have all these uh, these different items which you want to, which you are interested in from point of view of the discharge uh, uh, calculations or for other parameters which are design parameters. Those things are normally made available 
and a typical a typical table which will be made available for a specific uh, nozzle there's one table which we have uh, taken which is a table provided by the manufacturer for a specific model of the nozzle which has a diameter of 3.175 mm and the other um, the discharge variation is given with respect to the pressure variation and what will be the the wetted diameter so these three things are related for a specific diameter of the, the sprinkler uh, head or the sprinkler nozzle you will find that the with the variation of the pressure your uh, flow rate or the discharge rate will also vary and uh, the diameter the wetted diameter will also vary this might give you the total pressure variation but along with that there might be a, a minimum recommended pressure for example in this particular case it might be given along with that you should use this range of pressures on this level give you the minimum recommended pressure so below this are the pressures which are recommended pressures you can choose with respect to what is the prevailing pressure available how much can be uh, obtained under the conditions and accordingly what is the the flow rate which is uh, which will be obtained if you run the sprinkler under this pressure and this will be the the wetted diameter now these wetted diameters are again they are the diameters which are uh, without the wind conditions if you have the wind conditions then there will be some change in the wet diameter those things can be incorporated if you know the wind conditions what are the prevailing wind conditions let's now go on to another item which is the sprinkler spacing all these items which you are discussing is very important to understand that these items are the the items which you'll have to check your design for in some cases you might be having available or some of, the, some of these items might be fixed for example when we say um that uh, we want to select a particular nozzle now if you are going to select a particular nozzle then you might have a choice in many situations you might be already having some nozzles which you want to make use of so if that is the situation in that case your uh, constraint the design constraint becomes that you want to utilize a particular nozzle which is which might be a generic nozzle uh, size which you have um, procured and and kept with you because as a farmer you, you try to visualize that when you are going in for these systems you might use this sprinkler system for different types of crops and uh, if you have a very big farm your conditions the soil conditions also can vary in certain cases or if you have farms at two different locations the soil conditions can also vary to certain extent but let's let's take that uh, keep that out for the time being let's talk of a specific farm now when you vary the the type of crop which you might be using from one season to another season in that case you might find that the if you go in for a fresh design you might find that you might need uh, a different sets of um the, the the equipment the equipment can be in terms of the nozzles the size of the different size of nozzles or the the liters the main pipes all those things in many situation you will like to to fix these items if they are already available or you might uh, 
procure those items which are in between items. For example, if you can uh, use a sprinkler nozzle which is one level of size and uh, you might take another level which is the next level so that the variation is not much. You might use those intermittently for a slight, for, for taking care of a slight variation in the, the, the requirements or the application rate. So all these items we are dis discussing separately. Ultimately, you will have to have a, a trade-off between these things with respect to your constraints, which are very, uh, in most of the cases, which are very justifiable constraints. There are constraints which are either economic constraints. You cannot afford to uh, procure different sizes of the pipes. You cannot afford to procure different sizes of the nozzles, and those become your uh, constraints. But in the beginning, when you go in for a fresh design, then you have a, a choice. You might do a very detailed design, even uh, to look at the conditions, how the crops will vary from one season to another season, whether the same set of equipment will be able, when you will be able to use in those conditions also. So you might do a detailed design for all the combination of conditions which you have under your uh, um, your area uh, where, where you have the, the farming uh, activity going on. The sprinkler spacing Sprinkler spacing is a very important aspect which we have been referring to quite often. That most of the time, the sprinkler spacing will be the the most influencing factor in terms of whether you are talking in terms of the uniformity coefficient. The sprinkler spacing is the one which can be manipulated. The sprinkler spacing um, will also be important when you are uh, trying to incorporate the, the wind conditions. That again, you want to uh, alleviate the, all the ill effects of the wind conditions through the proper choice of the sprinkler spacing. So when you are uh, talking in terms of sprinkler spacing, you have to first decide what are the wind conditions which you must account for. And if you take the wind conditions of the daytime, invariably the daytime, daytime wind conditions will be more severe than the, the nighttime wind conditions. The wind velocities during the daytime will be much higher than the nighttime wind velocities. That is what has been observed all over the world in most of the places. So the daytime wind conditions are more severe. If you base your design on the data which is only taking account of the daytime wind velocities, then you are going to have um, estimates which will be conservative estimates. The design will be conservative because you will have higher wind velocities. You will try to account for that by having more overlap. Thereby, you will have an overlap which is excessive, which may not be required. So is, is the design will be more conservative. It might be an over design. Whereas if you take the, the night wind conditions on the other uh, con, when, uh, extreme, 
and your actual operations are in daytime also, then it can be the other way around. So what you do normally is that when you are uh, going in for the designs, when you go in for the, the selection of the, the sprinkler spacing, you try to take the average conditions or you use a weighting factor which will give some weightage to the, the night conditions and give some weightage to the, the day conditions. And you can have a, a trade off between the two. So in that situation, at the same time, I think it's also equally important that if the farmer is quite sure that when he when he's going to use this uh, system, if he's certain that he's going to use only in the, during the night time, then even if you take the night conditions, it will be safe. Otherwise, if you want to change your mind at that time, uh, it might be, it will be at the cost of uh, having a very low efficiency because if the wind conditions are higher than what you have assumed in the designs, is going to give you a design which will be very ineffective or um, the, it will be on the, the uh, other extreme, it will be a under design uh, situation. So, when you are looking at these these uh, sprinkler spacing uh, aspects, you will have to take the proper wind conditions. Uh, there are, again in this situation, there are recommendations which are available to account for the suspect. With respect to the wind speed, which is given in kilometers per hour, the sprinkler spacing and fraction has been provided as a ratio between SL and DW and SM and DW. The spacing has been provided with respect to different wind speed conditions as a fraction as a ratio between the spacing and the vector diameter. When the wind speed conditions are very low, these are the recommended Now, this type of information you can always use to find out what will be the, the DW under uh, different wind conditions. You can evaluate if you know that what is the, the spacing or if you, if you can choose your spacing. We are spacing normally as a function of again, uh, uh, you have the existing laterals. The spacing will be, when you buy the laterals, you know that what is the spacing of the, the those, uh, uh, the lateral spacing or the spacing between the two sprinklers, which is, which is normally um, available or when, which, which becomes a constraint on the, the farmer's side, that you have a little which is, which is having a fixed spacing. Similarly, when you, when you take a mean, you know that what is the, what is the point where the, the, the mean can be tapped or you can fix the little at that, those locations. So that fixes your, the main line spacing as I'm. In general, you will find that the spacing, the mainline spacing 
is invariably larger than the lateral spacing. Why that is so? And this, this is again because of the economic uh, uh, constraints. If you have the main line spacing, if is is lower, or if is uh, you have uh, more spacing on the main line, the, all the gadgets which you require whenever you attach the lateral, those can be reduced. So from that angle is invariably the the lateral spacing is kept more than uh, is uh, kept less than the the main line spacing. That is a very usual trend which is uh, used in this uh, sprinkler irrigation system. And in some cases you might have the equal spacing also. So looking at some of the the usual spacing which are uh, used in the sprinkler irrigation system, you have uh, the spacings which are uh, with respect to the same three categories which we had uh, earlier uh, looked at, depending on the type of crop which is under uh, question. You have, if you have the specialty crop, which is having more value, in that case, you might go in for the spacings like 9 by 12 or 12 by 12 or 9 by 15 meter. Now the variations in these spacings are also dependent on how much is the, what is the wind condition. So you, uh, you can choose the spacings along with the, the, the situation that what is the wind condition prevailing in, the, in those uh, localities. Then for field crops, the spacings are, which are used are slightly higher than the previous case. And when you have the orchards, the spacings can still be wider because in that case it will be a function of what are the spacings of those uh, individual trees or those plants. Conjunction with the spacing, there is one aspect which is very important, which is the aspect of offsets. This is a very recent phenomena, and it it pertains to the operation of these um, spring irrigation systems. That if you can use the the offsets. First of all, let's let's try to see that what what do we mean by the offset. Let's assume that you have you have a main line. they are 
Señor. With respect to the spacing between the lectures, they are spaced accordingly. This is the total uh, the four sets of lectures. And normally you attach them here onto the, the main line. In this case, the spacings which are relevant are this is the spacing between the laterals or the lateral spacing and the main line spacing. Now we have seen that when we want to operate the system in this manner, we have to take, we have to look into the, the overlap. The design contains what should be the SM, what should be the SL, so that we can get a proper, appropriate overlap, so as to reduce the, the, the depopulation losses and to increase the efficiency. The uniformity. But we have seen that invariably, if we look at the total field, a part of the field will be over irrigated, a part of the field will be under irrigated, depending on how much is the total depth of uh, water you have applied. So, if you want to keep a balance, if you want to keep the, the losses minimum, you might do so by sacrificing the, the requirement that all the fields should be getting the minimum required or the net depth. In some portion of the field, you will deliberately, you will keep the depth lower than the, the net depth required, so as to reduce the, the deep population losses uh, to, the, to the minimum possible level. Now, if you can, let me, let me put it like this. Let's, let's try to have a look which we had uh, uh, plotted earlier. The, we had depicted that through a plot that if this is our field and this is our net depth of application which is required, if we have 50 percent adequacy, with respect to 50 percent adequacy, you might get a situation where you have uh, in this situation for a specific level of the uniform to coefficient. If I want to reduce this, this deficit as well as this population loss. This I am getting mainly because of the fact that the overlaps are not um, very accurate. They do not give me a uniform to coefficient which is, which will ensure that all the places I am getting the equal depth. And that, this situation can be improved drastically if I change the spacing, if I, if I can have a control on the spacing in such a manner that I use one spacing at a particular time. The spacing remains same, but the location of the lateral, the next, in the next irrigation I can change. For example, if I have in one irrigation, I have this setup. In the next irrigation, instead of using the, the lateral at this location, if I can use the lateral at this new location, which is in between the two uh, existing locations, then This will, be, this will be the place where I can place my lateral and uh, the next lateral I can place 
at this location, the next later similarly I can place at this location. If I get this flexibility, then I might be in a position to apply the depth which is the replica of this. It means those, po those portions where there was a deficit earlier, they will get additional water and those portions where there was additional water earlier, they will be getting deficit now. So, if that happens, then what I have done is that I have uh, superimposed another application which is just opposite to this or if I, if I put it from upside down, I might get another application which is uh, like this now. We are just matching with this, it might not match this, exactly like this. So, over two applications, over two successive applications, I will get this total depth, out of which wherever there was a deficit earlier, here I had the surplus earlier, but now I have a deficit because now I am um, this is my level of, I have put it upside down. So, I have a deficit in this area. There is still the, for the next also, there is the same level, which is the required level of application. So, by doing, by using this, this is what is known as the offset. That I have, I have uh, offset in the, the position of the, the later. In between the previous uh, position of the two laterals, and that you can easily do by having a, a hose. You might have a connection through a, a flexible hose. So that the water can easily come into this and then the next case, this, this connection remains same, but you can physically locate it there. So, you, this type of system, this type of offset is, is very easily possible with the, the side roll system, where you have the whole thing mounted on the wheels, you can just, you have to move it, is only the position uh, of the placing of the lateral which has to be changed. It has been found that this type of uh, offset, the use of offset, in this particular case, the spacing can be SM by 2 or any other spacing because now you have the total flexibility. Looking at what overlap you want, you have complete flexibility. And by doing so, it has been seen that is around, um, it can give you an advantage up to around 15 percent additional uniformity coefficient. Though it will vary from what is the existing uh, uniformity coefficient and how much it can be improved. If it was very poor, it can be improved more. If it was a, a good uniformity coefficient earlier also, that means in any case your overlaps were quite reasonably good, yes. No, it is not, uh, you are not reducing the spacing, the spacing is still the same. The spacing between the two remains the same. But virtually you are applying twice now, once you are applying the same spacing and after that you are repeating the same spacing in between the rows. No, I think uh, there is a slight, uh, and I have to make another additional statement which I have made but which are not caught. This is not to be done over the same irrigation. These things are to be done over the successive irrigations. In one irrigation you are using this setting. When you go to the next irrigation, then you are using the, the change setting. 
So then is not is not what you are saying. I mean, you have to look at maybe the the efficiencies have to be worked out in terms of the total period of the crop growth. But even uh, even if you will look at the efficiencies of uh, two successive irrigations, that is how you have to work out. Otherwise, the efficiency will remain same. But what we are interested in is the efficiency in terms of the overall because. In the previous case, when we were keeping everything fixed, all along throughout the the total period of the crop, those areas which were getting less water, they are all along they are getting less water, and those areas which are getting more water, they keep on getting more water throughout. So that is avoided here, and that makes a lot of difference because if you have put in more water, that means you have brought it to the the field capacity level at least. And it won't retain anything beyond that. All the the deep percolation loss has gone out of the system, or uh, beyond the root down uh, depth. The only additional advantage is that the deficit is now distributed. Okay. Yes, please. Can we do the, the same thing with the nozzle location if we shift them just by half the nozzle location? I mean, we uh, move this lateral SL by two. In the new location. In which direction? In the same direction. In which direction the letters are placed? If we shift the letter by SL by two dis uh, distance, then the nozzle will be in the new position, and the distribution which we are getting in this uh, diagram will get just the perpendicular shift. Yeah, that. But what what he is trying to say is that uh, if we do the same thing in the with the lateral also, and the lateral you want to shift in this direction. That is also possible because once you are, there is the overlap which is uh, which you are having, and the overlap is not from one side; it's from both the sides. So you can you can uh, resort to that also, which is which is again possible by having a, a longer hose pipe. You can even do that. So that combination can also be tried. But then it has to be um, there has to be some systematic way of doing it. And that I I fully agree that uh, that will also have the similar impact, if not uh, the same impact. Because why this is being done is, as in most of the cases, as we have just said, that the SM is much larger than the SL. So the the advantage which you are getting is more if we manipulate the SL, SM sorry, than the SL. What you are uh, recommending is that we, sh we should manipulate SL, but SL as such is less than SM. So the the overlap might not change very much, even if you do that. Okay. So it is more convenient to change this. It is more more convenient to change this than to uh, change in this direction, because this direction you have already gone to the end of the field. Your length of the lateral is basically matching the the length of the Field invariably. We'll come to that when we'll uh, come to the layout of these uh, uh, systems. Okay. Any other question? Thank you. Then we'll stop here.